they do in being happy? They don't even know the first noble truth. So later on you find there are four noble truths. Don't just focus on one. The third noble truth is the end of suffering is happiness. The end of craving is nirvana, the ultimate happiness. So after all I figured out, hey, maybe these people were ending suffering. That's why they were happy. So real Buddhism is not just about suffering, it's about ending suffering in all its forms. And the sign of that is you can have a much more positive life in this world and also in another world as well. So once you learn what works in this life, it works at all levels of life. Now whether it's in the mental world or the outside world, what works for deep meditation also works for getting a beautiful girlfriend, letting go of your sense of self, relaxing, just having a bit of happiness in your heart. You find, I say this because no, 20 year olds or whatever age you are, you know, you're not just interested in having a good relationship. You find you become more beautiful and attractive by smiling. Of course, people like going out with happy people. Many actually girls have told me this. You know, that they said the sort of person they want in life is someone who makes them happy. And so, a smile, lightheartedness means you can make yourself happy, you can make other people happy. And if you want to get into deep meditation, without happiness there's no deep meditation. Um, so, so what's the whole point about being happy and um, being positive and um, living a good life as, as you have mentioned? And the whole point of this is actually learning the secret of happiness and peace. Because first of all you go just where ordinary happiness is. And you find, why is you know, it's having a good relationship. But how does it work? Let it go and feel, let it go and control. If you try and control your partner, they will run a mile away. They don't want to be controlled, they don't want to be told to do, they want to have someone who loves them for who they are. And then you start to use the same thing which works to get a good relationship with others on yourself. Can you love yourself for who you are and be at peace with yourself, whether you fail or succeed next week? Can you really be at peace with yourself and love yourself? If you do, you will do very, very well in the next exams. Can you just be at peace with yourself when you sit down cross-legged and meditate, instead of wanting to be this and wanting to be that? If you let go of the effort and the controlling, then you are still. Here's another example over here. I'm not sure, maybe you might not see it, but this is a bottle of water. You've got some air on the, the top here. The purpose of meditation is to get stillness. So I'm now going to hold this bottle of water perfectly still. Has it stopped moving yet? Okay, so what should I I'll try harder? It's actually moving. I'm really trying to keep this still. That's how many people meditate. They never succeed. That's how many people try their life. They try and make their life successful. They work so hard struggling with their relationships, struggling with their studies. No way can I make this water still by holding it. It's dead. I put it down. I let it go and I just wait. And after a few seconds, the water becomes more still than I, I can ever hold it. That's the secret of meditation. Learning how to let things go. And all the happiness in the world which you sought for, you find. Whenever you want something more, you can never enjoy what you already have. Whenever you want something more, you can never enjoy what you already have. Work hard. Strive. But stop from time to time so you can enjoy what you already have, what you already achieved. So ending desire becomes like to find something, you have to lose it first before you can find it, is, is, is there it? You know, it's after a while you have to lose a desire. Because if you're looking for the most perfect girl in the world, you'll never find her. You know why? Because she's looking for the perfect guy, and that's not you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So look for a girl who's good enough, and you're good enough, and you can have a wonderful time together. A good enough relationship. Ha, ha, ha.
Thank you, Ajahn. Due to time constraint, we will now move on to the last question. Uh, okay. Very good. Hi. 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 question. I agree with you that you know in life we really need to be happy. But uh, I realize that you know a lot of things in life, right? Um, you face irony. Like you, you brought a very good example in like in schools, right? I mean in a system of meritocracy where you know you. You talk about, you know, you, you teach people how, like, to do the right thing, like you go to school for knowledge, you studies, and at the end of the day, your grade is actually based on how good you are. How do you define how good, how good you are in the schools is actually based on how well people do in their work. So instead of focusing on how well you do, you start to focus on how well people do so that you will do well. So I believe this is what a lot of people face. Uh, I'm not just saying that in university, but in all sorts of life. Yeah. Then, so the thing is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really an irony because in, you keep saying that do the right thing, but the world don't really support it in such a way. I mean, the system don't encourage you to do the right thing. Then because of this irony, I believe that a lot of people actually don't feel happy about it. So how do you, how do you view this whole issue such that, you know, you become a happier person and think that this whole thing is, is, is in its way? Actually, just the smart people know you can win both ways. Which is, it's a wonderful thing to realize that if you have happiness, then you get success. Happy people are successful. Real success. Well, we, many people think of success, like just was saying about the, my founder of Facebook. That's not real success. You ask him, you won't say it's successful. One of my friends many years ago, you know, he was from LA, that he got to know, ah, uh, oh, what's that, ah, oh, uh, what's that fellow, Dirty Harry, and um, Clint Eastwood, yeah, he got to know Clint Eastwood because they were in the same fraternity together. And, you know, one day he stuck into a hotel to spend the evening with Bob Dylan. And, you now when he sort of met all these incredibly famous people who were supposed to be successful, I remember him telling me that Bob Dylan spent the whole night swearing and just saying, just, it's awful to be Bob Dylan. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Because that type of success means there's always a camera following you around. You have no freedom. You've got your persona, and that's who you have to be. Just can't be. Just free. You ask people. You ask really very wealthy people. Just I mentioned that people who win the lottery, is that success? Millionaires, billionaires, is that success? So many modern people, they just redefine what success truly means. Buddha did that thousands of years ago. And so look, you understand from this university what success really is. Question, don't just follow what other people say. One of the other sayings which I want everybody to, if you write this down, a very great thing for a university, where everybody thinks the same, no one thinks at all. Okay, where everybody thinks the same, no one thinks at all. So you should be challenging conventional wisdom in universities. Asking those questions, what is success? What is happiness? When you ask those questions, you get some great answers. And you'll find that, look, what the world says, that's what they say. I'm going to be happy. And I'm going to change to what the world says, what other people say. I'm not going to think like them. And I'm not going to be dependent on what other people think of success. Look at myself. Great education, top university. And I threw that all away. Some of my friends and my relations thought I was absolutely dumb and stupid. What are you doing? Throwing away a great education like that and just going to the forest of time and begging for your food. <laughs> that is ridiculous. But I've always had that... Maybe it was the encouragement from universities. No. If that's the path you want to go, go. I encourage you to sort of innovate, to be different, to try with other things. Who knows, you might fail. You may totally waste your time with those jackals of talent. Actually, for me, it wasn't a waste of time at all. I had huge success there. So you know, I found my success by following my happiness. And do you think I'm a successful person? I've got no money, I've got no property, I've got no sort of uh, safety net for my retirement. In fact, I can't retire. <laughs> you know how you treat monks. 
now when they get about 70 or 80, that's when they work where we begin. Now old monks, people love old monks. <laughs> but I'm happy. That's my success. So look, redefine success. Don't just follow what the world says. Just when everyone thinks one way, you just try it another way. And in academia especially, in this university, it's a university, it's pursuit of knowledge, not just pursuit of old stuff. Never allow your knowledge to stand in the way of truth. It's my, one of my other sayings. Never allow your knowledge to stand in the way of truth. All your knowledge which you've learned, question. And you find a new truth. Working, as they say, standing on the shoulders of the old Genesis. Stand on them and see further. So you find not just what other people say, you find more. And that's called the pursuit of knowledge, humanity, happiness, freedom. How many people are afraid of the future of our world? How can we prevent disasters, wars, natural calamities? If you all keep thinking the same old way, well, there'll be a solution. If you think outside of the box, as they say, you're not constrained by fear. You see more, different, different ideas of success, different ideas of progress, different ideas of happiness. Then the horizons are endless. And then there is a future. Because you make your future. That's success. So that's what I leave you with. You can create whatever future you like. And hopefully I'm giving you some means to creating that future. Everyone thinks the same. You think different. Otherwise, we're all going on this. If all the lemmings follow each other as they do in Norway every few years, the idea of a lemming is creature. They follow the leader, they all jump over the cliff. All we need is one lemming, one lemming to say, let's go a different direction. Maybe the other lemmings will follow. If you're all going the same direction, we're all heading for the same cliff. And there's no future. Universities. Radical. Think different. If you possibly can. But don't say so in the exam paper next week. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ajahn. Thank you, Ajahn, for your precious insights in Buddhism. <laughs> also teaching us how to balance our studies and personal life positively. I'm sure today we all live with joy and wisdom in our hearts. <laughs> to express our heartfelt gratitude and respect to Ajahn, may we now invite everyone to put your palms together and repeat sadhu three times in salutation to Ajahn. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. That's getting better. Now, whenever you do sadhus in Buddhism, whatever you do, give it fun, give it energy, put happiness into it. This is how you're successful. Okay, now three proper sadhus. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Does that make you happy? <laughs> Just like you, the examinations, give it energy and fun. And anything could be happy with the three boring sardis. Okay. Thank you, Ajahn, for your teachings. Let us now invite the president of NUS Buddhist Society, Waikit, Brother Waikit, to present a token of appreciation to Ajahn.